So I made a big mistake. In January of 2019, I showed this Terraform at NAM, And I thought it was going to be like a few months until it was ready to ship, and it wasn't. It took us almost 11 months later of fine-tuning and making it better, basically. And uh, here we are. So I wanted to show you some sounds today coming from this unit. Now, there's a lot to this. There's 11 different programs, and uh, I don't want it to be a 45-minute video. So here's what I'm going to ask. Uh, the, the things that you want to see uh, detailed about this pedal, comment below. That way I can make a separate video just for you. So, all right, with that said, let's go play through it. Okay, so what we have here are 11 different settings. Uh, Ottawa, envelope filter, flanger, uh, phaser, uni a univibe type effect, a rotary speaker type effect, an auto swell type of effect, tremolo, harmonic tremolo, uh, regular chorus, and then more of like a dimension style chorus. So think of like the uh, elusive boss style chorus from, from earlier. So anyways, let's start with the auto wah. I'm just gonna do like one setting and explain the parameters real quick. So what we have here, as you can see, it says rate, depth, blend, variable, volume, all right? So rate on this particular effect is the actual rate of the, the effect. Depth is the depth of the effect. So pretty easy stuff. Blend is going to normally be 50-50 uh, whenever it's straight up in the middle. So that means half of it's wet, half of it is 50% wet, 50% uh, dry signal. So if you want it all the way dry, turn it all the way down. All the way wet turn it all the way up so that does that is a little bit different for a few of the effects so stay with me here uh, variable is going to control the Q um, of the of this particular effect I think it's easier to demonstrate rather than explain it now let's look at this variable So if you think about an EQ pedal, it's it's really controlling how much it's peaking. Which basically a wah is just kind of a, a really narrow Q peaked in the mids. So this is controlling that sort of filter. Okay, let's look at the depth control. <laughs> So it's really controlling that frequency that you're wowing, I guess you could say, uh, on a lot of, you know, inductor type wahs, like the Crybaby or the Vox or anything like that. Um, there's a resistor that people like to change to do like a vocal mod. This is kind of changing what that's doing right there. And then of course, rate is gonna do what rate does. <laughs> And then blend, if we go all the way down. Fifty-fifty now. So let me kind of explain it here because it is a little bit different on the envelope filter. It's not really like a rate or depth. On the rate, uh, the rate is going to control the speed of the attack and the release. The depth is going to control the um, envelope sensitivity. And I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. Uh, the variable is going to control the Q of the filter. So again, these are things that are better demonstrated rather than talked about. Volume is volume. And uh, then on the blend, the blend is going to control, again, dry versus wet. So let's turn it on. A 
let's let's start with the depth first. I can change the, really the sound of that peak. Now we go on to the rate control. Again, the rate is controlling the attack and the release. So exaggerate the setting a little bit. And then on to the variable. So it's really raspy there. So let's turn that down. Turn this blend all the way up. Actually, I just realized it wasn't all the way up. So with that variable all the way down, not that much of an exaggerated effect. Turning up a bit. You can hear also that it's such a sharp EQ on an envelope filter like this. Uh, you may sometimes have to compensate with the volume. I'm clipping the amp just a, a tad little bit. I can hear it. Um, but you'll, that's just no, a normal part. Even a wah is going to do something like that a lot of times. If, if your pickups are hot enough, you'll just start clipping the amp a little bit more with, with that resonant frequency. On the flanger, uh, rate is going to control the rate, of course. Depth is going to control the depth. Variable is going to change the feedback. Now, I'll play that in a minute, but basically it's going to make it do a lot crazier robot type sounds by changing the feedback of the circuit. Uh, so, we'll play with that a little bit. Uh, blend is normal blend, uh, all the way counterclockwise dry, just like everything else, almost everything else. Uh, all the way clockwise, completely wet. And some of these effects like flange and chorus in phase, you want it 50-50 because you, you have to have the dry and the wet together in order to get the effect. So like on a phaser, for example, if you just take the wet signal, it's basically going to sound like a clean signal that's just kind of shifting just because of the way phase works. Uh, so sort of similar to flanger and, and chorus, but here we go. <laughs> Turn the depth down. Now let's look at the variable on here, which, uh, like I said, is going to control the feedback. Turning it all the way down is going to, it's almost like a depth control in a way, but it's not a depth control because it's just changing the feedback. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to the phaser. 
uh, rate, depth, normal stuff there. Um, blend, normal stuff. Variable, that's where the fun comes in. That's where you really can, uh, it, it works, this part works only on a stereo setup. It's gonna allow more stereo separation versus more like a dual mono thing where it's just mono split. So what that's gonna allow you to do is basically get a bigger, wider phase. So let us let me stop talking. We'll play a little bit and uh, see what we got. Let's turn the variable all the way down, depth all the way up. We want the blend at 50-50 on this. Uh, we can, you can turn it up and if you turn it down, it kind of acts as um, sort of like a depth control in a way whenever you blend in more dry signal. So we'll play with that. <laughs> Let's mess with the blend a little bit. Let's turn it all the way up. So not as dramatic of an effect, of course. All the way down is just dry. Let's make sure we're in the middle. And then let's play with the variable. Turn all the way up. And that's the basic gist of the phaser. Pretty simple effect. It's kind of kind of a cross between more like a phase phase 90 and the small stone it's it's in that sort of range is is what we're going for all right and on to the u vibe which is probably one of the most requested non-distorted type of effects that we've been asked for for years and years and years uh, we've included it on this and uh, i think it's fantastic it's really adjustable it's super cool so Basically what you have is the rate, of course. You have the depth control, which is going to do what depth does, controls the depth. Uh, blend is gonna be the blend. On the variable, um, you're gonna maximize the higher part of the throb whenever it's um, all the way down. And whenever you turn it all the way up, it's gonna maximize sort of the lower part of the throb. So uh, if you're familiar with Univibes, and that those type of effects you know what i'm talking about it's that bottom end growl Okay, so on to the rotary, which is one of my favorite ones on here. Um, we did something that's pretty unique, and uh, I think you're going to love it. So normally you have a tap tempo switch here that you tap it and you get the tempo, right? That works across pretty much everything. The rotary is different, but it's different in a good way. Because normally when you have a Leslie type of cabinet, you don't have a tap tempo. It's either, it's either fast or it's slow. So that's what we did here. So what we have, the rate is actually the tweeter speed, the, uh, the tweeter of, of a simulated Leslie. The depth is the woofer speed. So picture two speakers spinning and those two knobs control those two speakers. Now the blend, rather than being a clean blend, if you go all the way to the left, it's going to pan to, not really pan because it's not going to the left, but it's, um, it's mostly woofer, woofer sound. If, you go, if you're turning it clockwise, then it's mostly tweeter sound. And then the variable is going to change how fast it ramps up and down. Settings pretty much in the middle, so the blend is in the middle, which means it's 50% woofer, 50% tweeter. <laughs> So let's try the variable. First of all, let's start with it all the way up. So 
So it's very quick ramp all the way up. Now let's turn that all the way down. And of course, this is a knob, right? So you can control how fast it's gonna go. We do that same test. Now the blend, let's mess with that. Let's go all the way counterclockwise. So as you can see, all the way clockwise is treble, or the horn rather, and then all the way counterclockwise would be the woofer. So I usually keep that right back in the middle. And you can change the speeds on each one. So let's get a slow speed on the tweeter, fast speed on the woofer and see what happens. Let's do the opposite. So lots of fun with that. I uh, love that effect on things. Just It sounds massive in stereo, it's, which is my preferred way to run when I can, but it's also good in mono as well. Uh, and I'll explain some more about the mono stuff here in, at the end of this video after we get through some sounds. Okay, so the next position on the dial is the auto swell, which is, uh, I was kind of going for sort of a slow gear type of effect, an auto, auto swelling of the volume. Uh, so on, on here, of course, we don't really have a rate or a depth with that sort of effect. So the rate control is going to be the attack time of the swell. So when it's down, it's going to be fairly fast. When it's up, it's going to be pretty slow ramping in. And then the variable here is um, it's actually going to change the pick attack sensitivity. So, and you're gonna have to kind of adjust this according to what guitar you have. If, if, it's, uh, if it's a pretty hot guitar, then you're probably going to turn it up a little bit more. If it's single coils, you're probably gonna turn it down a little bit more. And if it's down too far, you just won't get much of effect. So I'll turn it all the way down, you'll see what I mean. Not a whole lot. Turn it up too much and kind of won't get much either. and you'll hear it stutter a little bit. So you want to find the right spot. And you'll also notice I have the blend all the way up. Now we can run some clean signal with it, but you kind of lose the effect. Maybe add just a little bit of clean into it if you, uh, if you want that. There's also another feature on here that gives you a little bit more of a stereo separation. That's the depth control. When you're all the way down, it's just going to be mono. Turn that up, and you, the more you turn it up, the more of a stereo separation you'll get.
Okay, now on to the next one, which is tremolo. Now, this one is pretty standard stuff, right? You would think it's just pretty standard stuff. So let me show you the first thing. Uh, rate is rate, depth is depth, except maximum depth goes to square tremolo. So when you're, I don't know, maybe about 3 o'clock or so, 3.30 or somewhere, somewhere in that area, uh, you're still at sine wave. Turn it all the way up. Now you're at square wave. This variable is going to change the uh, amount of space between the peaks. So if I turn it all the way down, and I'm in square wave right now, turn it all the way up. So you kind of can get a feel for that. Same thing, it works on sign as well. And then uh, another one of my favorite effects, when you're all the way down on the blend control, it's not a typical blend on this. Uh, it's mono, so everything is the exact same through both amps. As we turn this up, it starts to kind of ping pong. So the cool thing about this, that I, the reason why I really wanted this feature on the pedal, is with two amps, you can really get more of a stereo separation if they're just slightly off time. Start all the way down, and I'll just edge it up a little bit. Okay, so for the next one, it's harmonic tremolo. You may be wondering what the difference is and why it, why it even is harmonic tremolo. So years ago, there was some brown face and blonde Fender amps that had a different type of vibrato, vibrato circuit, which is harmonic tremolo. And it's sort of a phase along with the tremolo, with a dip in the volume. So it's, it's, it's a really cool effect. So it's almost like a univibe sort of effect. Uh, we added on this, and I love it. it so here, here's what we have, uh, the rate is the rate, so it's going to control the speed. Uh, the depth is going to control the depth. And again, just like the tremolo, the other tremolo, the regular one, when you turn it all the way up, you're going to be at, uh, at square, square waves. So that's going to give you a different sound. Uh, the blend on harmonic tremolo, though, it's going to change the cutoff frequencies between the low and high filters. Big terminology, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, the uh, variable is the same thing as the previous tremolo, so it's gonna change the distance between, the space between the waves, even though the peaks are staying the same, it's gonna kinda cut out some. And then volume again. And just so you know, the volume on here, uh, middle is generally unity, you can adjust as, as you, your ear tells you, but minus six all the way down, plus six dB all the way up. So you can have some volume boost in it as well, and some volume cut if you want that. So you can really hear as I'm turning that blend, it's really changing the entire feel, the entire uh, sonic structure of that of that tone. Um, and then variable, let me mess with variable again. I'll put this right in the middle. <laughs> So as you can see, it's it uh, does the same exact thing as the previous tremolo. It just has a different effect with this type of uh, harmonic tremolo. 
Then let's try out, let's go ahead and hit the square wave. <laughs> Uh, this course is actually my favorite for like a simulated Leslie thing. I know a, a lot of people like to uh, use a chorus pedal and kind of get sort of a sort of a Leslie effect. Arion Stereo Chorus, for example, is a great example of that. Um, so I have it set up right now for something sort of along those lines. On this setting, uh, rate is rate, depth is depth, blend is blend, variable. Um, variable is actually going to control the low end. So when you have it all the way down, you're going to have more low end. As you roll it up, you're going to cut that roll end off. Low, you're going to cut that low end off. Uh, so you know, some people like that. Some people don't like a real boomy chorus. Uh, I like a little bit of meat on it, unless I'm using my neck pickup. Then I might roll it back just a little bit. Let me show you this variable real quick. So all the way down. So it's not really like an EQ pedal. It's just rolling some of that back end, uh, that back end low uh, low frequency off of that signal. Traditional chorus setting that, you know, the 80s chorus, so to speak, is generally depth quite a bit up, rate quite a bit down. <laughs> You get the picture. Um, let's see what else. We have blend all the way up. It's just the core signal, but the way we're doing it with stereo, it's it's a little bit out of sync, so to speak, so to speak. So you get that stereo effect. In mono, it's not doing that sort of thing at all, so you just have the vibrato effect when it's all the way wet in, in mono. Uh, rolling it down, of course, is just the dry signal, so if you want that big, fat width, just so roll it in. And then it doesn't sound quite so, you know, 80s white snakes or, or whatever. I guess more like 80s poison, maybe. Right, and lastly, we have the Dimension Chorus, and um, yeah, what can I say about it? It's, it's that traditional big, huge, wide chorus sound that, um, you know, we always love to play.
Same thing on this, blend is the blend. So all the way up is going to be just that wet signal. Uh, variable is going to control that low end again. So I'll, sh I'll show you on the wet signal. You can hear that a lot more actually. <laughs> So you can hear how it really rolls that off, um, you know, just, just on the wet signal there. It's not affecting your dry signal. And basically, it's, uh, it's sort of like the previous chorus with more chorus added to it. So it's several voicings of chorus all built into one, which is why when you're turning it up all the way, it still sounds like a chorus. When I say turn it up all the way, I mean turning the blend up all the way, not the volume up all the way. All right, so that's all the sounds in the Terraform. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about like running in mono and a few things like that. So uh, let's go over here. So obviously I use that in stereo. You can use it in mono. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will. It sounds just as good, but I want to kind of explain how to do it. And the manual explains this as well. And I'll briefly do this because I'm, again, we're probably already like 40 minutes into this or something. Uh, so you'll see this switch on here. It's the pre and post switch. That's gonna really determine whether, um, whether you're running in a stereo fashion or mono. Now with that said, yes, you can still run both in mono. So for example, if you just wanna use it like as sort of a multi-effect, in other words, all these things all in one place on your board, and you just wanna run into it and be able to turn the dial and get whatever sound you want. You can do that, it's totally fine. Just leave it on normal and run it that way. But if you wanna start getting fancy, then for example, let's say you have a, you know, a metal zone and you want your univibe before your metal zone, but you want your chorus after your metal zone and you don't wanna buy two pedals. Well, you can use this pedal in that situation. So you would basically run into this pedal, out to your metal zone, back into this, and then out to your amp, or you know, throughout your pedal board configuration. You also use it in the effects loop of an amp as well. So it works, you know, coming from the effects loop to get your dirt from your amp as well in that situation. It comes with assigned effects, which ones are pre and post, but you can change those. Pre is U-Vibe, Phaser, Flanger, uh, Envelope Filter, and Ottawa, and post, meaning the type that you would want to run after dirt is going to be the dimension, the chorus, the tremolo, the harmonic tremolo, uh, the auto swell, and the rotary. Now, these aren't rules by any means. This is just how we have it set. You can totally change that all you want with the pedal. Uh, you can also change it on presets. So maybe on one preset, you want the chorus before your dirt, but on the second preset, you want it after the dirt. You can do that as well. And this is, by the way, this is the preset button. Just, just get your sound hold it down and uh, click it for whatever position you want and that it's set. As I was editing this, I uh, realized I forgot something. So here it is. You don't have to hold down this preset button here either. You can just simply hold down the tap tempo switch, the LED will change color and that will allow you to go through the settings as well. To get out of that mode, simply hold it back down and now you're back to standard. You can also use MIDI with it as well. MIDI. Controls right there, uh, in and through. We provide a cable that connects to it. So that's good. You don't have to buy that. Uh, nine volt, I think you can use 18 on it, but really don't. It's not gonna do anything because we regulate it. It's gonna just stay at nine volts no matter what you do. Unless you go over 18, then you're gonna burn the pedal up probably. You can use an expression pedal. Just with any of the parameters, you can set it up to use an expression pedal uh, to control that parameter and you can set the you know the heel down and the toe up as well all right and that's it so make sure you check it out at your uh, local retailer you could probably buy it, buy it from our website as well i'd imagine i think you'll love it if you like modulation you'll love it if you hate, don't like modulation you probably won't like it hey also um make sure you check the description of the video because i'm going to put like the full length manual that way you can read through all the nitty gritty details and you know, really nerd out with uh, with the best of us. So, uh, and again, I'm looking at your comments as well to see what other videos that you want to see about this because I can't possibly go through this without making like a day long video. 
and uh, I've already been recording this for about four hours as we speak. So I'm hungry. Thanks for watching. See you later.